along the way we've learned how much of a community center a brewery is and ever since four months in we've been selling everything we could make J.P. Viborny, head brewer, 1055 Brewing. I'm Chris Squires, general manager, 1055. We're expanding to downtown Tucson. We're reaching out to the community looking for local investors uh, here in Tucson and throughout Arizona who believe in craft beer and believe in our brand and think that it's headed the right direction. The next step that we're raising money to accomplish is a production facility much larger than our current one, able to meet demand that we have immediately, but also be flexible enough to grow uh, into a brewery that can produce enough beer for the whole state of Arizona. JP and I met through uh, JP's brother Matt, who's a good friend of mine. We worked together for uh, several years. Um, Matt passed away several years ago, and uh, that, that event brought JP and I uh, together, uh, became very close as friends. Uh, when we started the company, we wanted to name it after Matt somehow and how he had brought our families together. So uh, a great way to do that, we thought, was to use his initials. So MLV, Matthew Luke Viborny, they're all Roman numerals and it adds up to 1,055. So it's got some, got some meaning and some history for us. Once we started seriously considering this uh, career, we started putting our beer out there a little bit more. We entered a, a local homebrew contest and there was 87 entries and our double IPA, which became our Tucson Citra, uh, won. It took first place out of every 87 entries. So JP and I always knew that what we wanted to do was to open up a large production brewery in downtown Tucson, but we didn't have the, the expertise, the knowledge, and we definitely didn't have the capital to open up a, a place that big starting off. So uh, we decided a good way uh, to start would be a stepping stone, and that's what this project has been for us. We started small, uh, which you see here is a three barrel system. Right now we make about 300 barrels a year. Uh, that's double what we started with. We were able to grow the number of fermenters we had pretty quickly. So we sell every uh, drop we can make. We have about 30 or uh, 35 accounts on our waiting list right now who are simply waiting for uh, us to expand so we can sell, we have enough capacity to sell them beer. Uh, we sell uh, a third of the beer that we make uh, on premise. Most of the beer that we sell goes out to our bars and restaurants. Our waiting list uh, is growing every every month. We add another restaurant or bar that wants to have us on tap. Can't wait for us to be able to provide them beer. Opening a breakfast restaurant, we knew we needed to have the best of the best. There's tons of mom and pop places all around. So when we went out, we said, you know, we want to have the best eggs in the breakfast game. We uh, we went and, and invested into a farm. So you know, later on, once we got uh, uh, our liquor license and we wanted the best beer in the game, we went out and found someone we could go with. 1055 being that. We picked this location because it was a good distribution hub. It was a good place for us to move our beer out to bars and restaurants. Uh, we did not anticipate we'd get a whole lot of foot traffic down here. A lot of people who would be willing to make the drive uh, down to taste our beer right out of the tanks. Uh, we, were, we were thankfully very wrong about that. That's ended up being a big chunk of our uh, volume and of our revenue is people that drive down to our tap room and buy uh, beer, have a sit and have a pint and uh, get a growler filled to take beer home with them. One thing we look forward to in the expansion is uh, keeping this space turning into this space into a barrel aging facility and a sour house. Uh, we, we don't want to leave our roots here. Uh, and, the, and the rent lets us do that. It's, it's very affordable to stay here and we've already built it out to accommodate the brewing process. The demand for craft beer in Tucson outstripped our production very quickly. That's probably the biggest drive to uh, expand. So that there's a lot of potential and there's a lot of demand out there. We believe in the in the future of downtown Tucson and where it's going, and it's not it's not just us. There's an incredible amount of activity happening down there between the modern streetcar project, which has been transformative. Uh, we've got the AC Marriott Hotel that's going to be ready in the coming months, uh, and dozens of residential, multi-unit residential projects that are in the planning, design, or construction phase. The building itself, uh, we're looking in the 
Uh, it's, it's a wide range between five and 12,000 square feet we're looking for, and we need room to grow so that as we expand uh, our distribution footprint throughout the state of Arizona, we can continue to add tanks and continue to meet that demand. So with our food concept, we're imagining uh, a craft sausage concept. Sausage and beer have gone together for quite a while. And so we'll bring in help that are going to help that will help us staff that, uh, both for front of the house for the service in where that our con that our customers see, but also back of the house where the food is being produced. That on-premise operation plays a huge role in that because that outdoor beer garden, that on-site restaurant, uh, are a big uh, part of the branding and a big part of the core concept. Uh, we're going to sell a lot of our beer on site to customers who are coming down to have a beer and sit with us in our, our beer garden. Uh, the beer garden itself is a big outdoor space. There's things to do, there's games to play, there's table tennis, there's bocce, there's uh, things that really do make it a community space where you can bring your family down and spend an hour or two there. A big piece of, our, of the capital we're raising is going towards purchasing uh, larger brewing equipment. It's been a lot of fun brewing on this small system and, and hustling but we are very much looking forward to the next system. This system is five times bigger and it's going to allow us to not only hit uh, Tucson wide at the end of the first year, but statewide in the future. The other thing that production expansion lets us do is to sell beer in places that we can't sell right now, places where we simply can't meet that demand, like grocery stores, liquor stores, convenience stores, things like that, a, a very large channel of total beer sales. A new law was just recently passed in Arizona uh, that lets us, it raises a lot of restrictions for us. And this, this law allows us to raise money in a locally focused way. We have to target Arizona residents, but those are the people that we want. That's a big part of our ethos already. Uh, we think that local investors have the most interest in seeing our company be successful, not only from a financial standpoint, uh, but from a, a social standpoint. They, they exist in the community where this new brewery is going to exist, where this new community hub is going to exist. The response from our community has been amazing. It's been overwhelming, but we're not done yet. Uh, this new law that we're using to raise money lets us keep going until the end of the year. Uh, we had numerous articles in the paper, we had an NPR spot, and we had a flood of investors, uh, people that we labeled passion investors. These are friends and family and taproom uh, patrons. Thank you very much for taking the time and watching our video. To learn more about how you can invest in 1055 and the future of craft beer in downtown Tucson, you can contact us at the information on your screen or visit us at invest.1055brewing.com. Should we do a cheers or? Mm. A little glass raise? Already, we don't have to say anything. We I'm already worried about it. Close it cheesy. out like that. Yeah, no, that would be okay. Cheers. If we don't say. Yeah, we don't say anything. We cheers. Just, cheers. Yeah.